Welcome to our kitchen. Today we prepare an ancient Roman dish, cooled with snow, perfect as a summer appetizer. We start with the ingredients. We need bread, cheese, garlic, honey, black pepper, olive oil, posca and snow, and the fresh herbs, mint and cilantro. Mint and cilantro are two of the most used aromatic herbs in ancient Roman recipes. If you don't have them, you can use dill or parsley instead. First, we remove the crumb from a loaf of bread and soak it in posca. Posca was an ancient beverage known mainly for being the typical drink of the Roman army, but it was also used as a medicinal remedy. The basic preparation is simple, water and vinegar. The authors don't provide the ratio, but we need to remember that it has to be drinkable. Drinking vinegar may seem strange to us, but it's not so different from drinking water with a squeeze of lemon to give it flavor. Then we grind in the mortar the black pepper. To make posca, we diluted one part of vinegar in seven of water. Medicinal versions of posca that we find in Byzantine sources include penny royal, cumin, fennel, parsley, thyme and others, as suggested by Paulus Egineta, or just penny royal, as Antimus writes in his book about foods. Then we mince the mint and cilantro. Posca, sometimes called just acetum, which means vinegar, is mentioned frequently in sources as the Historia Augusta, as well as in the Vita Catonis by Plutarch. Cato, the same author of a few recipes we prepared, had the habit to drink plain water. Once in a while, when he was particularly thirsty, he drank Posca, wine even more rarely, just when he felt exhausted. It is important to understand the context. For an ancient Roman, this is a form of ostentation of simple habits, a way to show off moderation. The Historia Augusta, a collection of biographies of several emperors from the 1st to the 3rd centuries, reports many episodes of military commanders and emperors who drink posca and eat the simple food of the army, such as a cured pork fatback, buccellatum, which is a kind of bread, cheese and mutton during a military campaign. According to the Codex of Justinian, the most important source for ancient Roman law, Written in the 6th century, the army has to alternate wine and posca in time of expeditions. To make the bread, we used the basic method described by Cato in his De Agricultura, using white wheat flour, the most common kind of flour according to Galenus and other authors. This is the same method we used to make the poppy seed bread you find in the description below, but without the seeds and egg. We add in the mortar one clove of garlic and the minced herbs. This recipe is part of the most important book for ancient Roman cooking conventionally attributed to Marcus Gavius Apicius. The author doesn't provide the ratio of the ingredients, but we suggest to not exceed with garlic, an aroma that appears rarely in this cookbook and that appears to be mainly used by plebeians, as we read in the Appendix Virgiliana. From this source we prepared in the past a farmer dish called Moretum with cheese and garlic. You find the link to the video in the description below. About the cheese, the author just writes that it has to be salted cow cheese. In the recipe, it's pounded in the mortar with the other ingredients, 
so it needs to be firming off. We suggest, however, avoiding hard cheese for a better outcome. The content of salt is important for this recipe, being the only source of salt used here. If your cheese is too sweet, add a pinch of salt to the mixture. Now we add a bit of honey and the cheese. One of the most interesting ingredients for this recipe is snow. In the Roman sources, it appears like a fundamental ingredient to make a dish based on spelt and mulsum, a honeyed wine, a preparation mentioned, for example, by Pliny the Younger. In this cookbook, it is used just for two recipes of salacatabia, whereas in the third, the author writes to place the dish in cool water. Marshall dedicates a few epigrams to snow, stating clearly that it is used in summer and writing about two tools, sacum nivarium and colum nivarium, which means snow sack and snow sieve, the first made of flax used to cool the wine. Then we dilute the sauce with a bit of olive oil and water until we reach a creamy texture. We suggest using extra virgin olive oil, considered the best quality oil in ancient Rome, but the author doesn't provide directions about this. We squeeze out the excess liquid from the bread. This step is important. The plate will be covered with snow that will melt in a short time and we need that the bottom layer is not too liquid. Then, just before plating, we shave some ice. Differently from Romans, we don't have a disposal snow that they stored and preserved. People bought snow mainly in summer to cool down dishes and beverages. Snow was widely used also by Greeks. In the Deipnosophists, Athenaeus reports that Greeks considered a warm wine bad, so they had the habit to cool it with snow. Snow otherwise was also drunk. We plate placing the bread on the bottom, then we coat it with a generous layer of sauce and place the shaved ice on top just before serving. The taste is surprising. It's fundamental that each morsel includes all the three layers, which give three different sensations that blend in your mouth. First, the freezing cold of the ice, then a complex creamy sauce, in which the herbs are enhanced by cheese and the intense flavor of garlic, then the bread, now completely mixed with a slightly sour aroma of the diluted vinegar. This plate recalls of panzanella, a traditional Tuscan dish prepared in summer. Panzanella has a fewer ingredients and contains tomatoes, but the principles are similar. A dish usually made with stale bread, soaked in water, vinegar, olive oil, basil, tomatoes and onions. Sometimes with the addition of other ingredients cooled in the refrigerator before serving. This delicious recipe is the perfect way to taste a summer and share Roman plate, excellent as a fresh appetizer or even as a main dish during this time of the year. If you're interested in ancient foods and flavors or you're just looking for unusual and delicious recipes, please subscribe our channel.